Hello my friends, this is Wake Angel 2001 sharing with you something that I just kind of impulse bought off of eBay earlier this week. It is the Transformers Robot in Disguise um, Warrior Class Grimlock in G1 Colors. I remember this was a thing in stores a few years ago, and I kind of just left it on the shelves, uh, cause I always, I was under the impression that, you know, it's Grimlock. Grimlock should at least be a Voyager scale toy. So, like, a Warrior class, which is essentially a deluxe, would really be too small for this kind of thing. But, after all these years, I kind of softened on the idea. Especially since I ended up not really having a huge um, R.I.D. collection, but one of the few toys I actually do have from it, the uh, scout size strong arm, actually is perfectly in scale next to him. So yeah, all those, um, like this is specifically the power armor, I believe they called it. You know, the one, the one that has uh, the gimmick where you could put the translucent armor on it in its robot mode, that one. Um, and uh, that... Put that next to this works pretty good. Um, so as we all, as some of you may remember, um, in Transformers Robots in Disguise, uh, Grimlock was um, black and green. Uh, he had a very different color scheme from uh, from his uh, from his usual G1 counterpart. But despite that, um, the color scheme still totally works in this in this uh, mold. Like. Um, uh, the, the hand is kind of visible right there on the side, but it actually kind of looks like a neat little bit of the deco. Um, it, it stands out, but it, not in an egregious way. And I still kind of find it funny that despite the fact that he's a T-Rex, he still has little, little hands with a thumb and everything. Very, it's very cute. Um, in this mode, he can open his mouth with a little hinge on the back of his head. That's kind of cool. Rah, rah, rah. Um, the two dinosaur arms are just on swivels. They can move up and down. And um, his legs are on a swivel. Um, it's a bit loose. Like it, It's not so floppy that they'll move when I'm messing around. But they will just kind of like... They feel like they'll collapse under his weight sometimes. Like, they feel loose, but they're not as loose as they feel, which is really weird. Um, and since, uh, as with most Grimlocks, the legs are actually his arms, uh, he has that. He has a little bit of inward and outward movement. There is a knee swivel, and they bend at the, uh, you know, the knee. Of course, uh, given the fact that he's a T-Rex, um, and there's no ankle swivels, there's really only so much posability you can get out of him. Uh, basically, I, that, I don't even know what that is. Basically, Grimlock can do two things. Um, he can, he can stand up like this and look like an, and look like, uh, what the common person thought a Tyrannosaurus looked like in the 80s. Or, you can turn him like this and make him look more anatomically correct for a T-Rex. And it still kind of works. And you know, um, uh, as we... As I said before, I do have my own, what I consider to be my definitive Grimlock toy, uh, which may be a controversial pick. It is the um, Fall of Cybertron Grimlock. And um, it's actually pretty surprising how similar these two guys look. I mean, uh, he's a bit hes a bit stylized for being in the cartoon rather than the video game, but uh, yeah, they do look really similar. I mean, the... Like, the relatively small head, like, real-life T-Rexes had way bigger heads than this, and the tails were not so fat, but, um, apparently the, these two Grimlocks pretty much have the, the same design element. Oh, by the way, after, even after all these years, the light-up gimmick on my Grimlock still works. Yeah, I've never replaced those batteries. I'm not even sure how to replace the batteries, yet they still work. Like, how old is this toy? <laughs> I don't even remember when Fall of Cybertron came out. That's how old it is. Um, but yes, that is the wonderful majesty that is Grimlock. And oh yeah, he actually goes pretty well with the new Slash figure too. Like, he he's bigger than her, so, you know, still has kind of the whole uh, me Grimlock protect daughter kind of vibe going on. All right, so let's get, let's get old Robots in Disguise Grimlock into his robot mode.
And here is the G1 colored Robots in Disguise Grimlock in robot mode. Looking pretty good. Like, the, um, I do believe they gave him a new head sculpt to, co to accommodate this paint scheme. Uh, one that has a faceplate and everything, because that looks a heck of a lot more like G1 Grimlock than Grimlock looked in the cartoon. Although he still has that stupid poker chip badge that, uh, that they had from that show. That's the one gimmick. That, like, it's such a tiny little gimmick for the line, but it's so obtrusive, because it's a big circular part of the molding. You can't even just peel the sticker off and put on a regular Autobot sigil because you'll always have that circle in the molding. Um, but yeah, everything is there. The gold and the silver is all in the right place. The red underpants, the black thighs. Like, this, this is a really good looking Grimlock. Um, the colors are all in the right place and he has a good form factor. He also has surprisingly little kibble, even though the T-Rex the arms is kind of like chilling out down there. It almost looks like they'd be secondary anatomy, like look, they can, they can reach forward. Now Grimlock has four arms. Rawr! I will grab you with my little arms and then punch you with my big ones. <laughs> oh, it's... Well, that's uh, that's actually that would actually be kind of a cool gimmick um, um, for Grimlock to to do something like that. I also like how like um, the tail does a really clever thing to become the legs. Like you see, like like they kind of pull out and they rotate around and peg in, and that's how you form his shins. That's really clever, and it's a great way to get rid of the tail. Um, it, that's actually something he has over the Fall of Cybertron version of Grimlock because it allows him to um, hide the bulk of his legs in his tail without making his tail super huge. And if you look on the inside, they actually sculpted in a tail half on the inside of the shin so it'll be symmetrical with the actual tip of the tail that's been folded in on the other side. Very clever. Um, as far as posability goes, he still has the swivel for the arm and uh, it hinges out here. There's a bicep swivel that used to be his knee bend and the, uh, the knee is now an arm. It's ratcheted. Yeah. Um, there's no rotation at the wrist, but it, go, it, has a, it goes in and out because of transformation. He has a neck swivel that can rotate, so that's kind of cool. Uh, no waist joint, but he has pin disc hips that go all the way forward and all the way back and all the way out. Lots of range there. There's a thigh swivel and a knee. Gets almost 90 degrees. Um, he has a toe joint for the, for the transformation, but... Actually, no, he doesn't have a toe joint for the transformation. He does on this foot, like... Oh, no, he does have a toe joint for the transformation. Yes. It's just that um, since there's a click point for the transformation, it kind of doesn't feel like a joint too much. Anyway, uh, he has nice big feet so he can get a good stance. Yep, that's all well and good. He's a very, very good, very admirably posable figure. He does everything you want. The only, like I said, the only thing that he's missing is some size. Uh, once again, let's bring in the Fall of Cybertron Grimlock to stand side by side. And you can see the true difference in scale here as this guy literally comes up to Fall of Cybertron Grimlock's waist. And some of you may be wondering, Wake Angel 2001, why is Fall of Cybertron Grimlock your definitive Grimlock? Isn't that such a weird choice? Um, and, oh, by the way, the Fall of Cybertron Grimlock trans has an almost identical transformation scheme. Look, the folded up T-Rex head and neck in the back of the figure, just like this one. The two little arms hanging off the back, just like this one. Um, like, the, the, the transformation of the forearms, aside from the fact that the, the T-Rex to um, toes don't articulate, that's the same. The tail being used to make the legs, that's the same. Like. Warrior Grimlock from Robots in Disguise has the same basic transformation skeleton as Fall of Cybertron Grimlock. And I love that because here's the thing that I'm going to say that's going to be tantamount to Transformers blasphemy. All right, here we go. I'm about to get a lot of dislikes for this. I do not like G1 Grimlock's transformation. 
I do not like the way that his robot mode basically is formed by like opening up the T-Rex and then leaving two gigantic pieces of wing kibble on his back. Like, it makes Grimlock like one of the biggest, coolest, most badass characters in the entire franchise. His toy is basically a shell former with huge bits of shell on his back. And like, you know, I've always had so many things to say about shell forming, like like RC being a shell former was bad and Thunderblast being a shell former was bad. Like shell forming is not like like I know he's not the worst shell former. There there have been way worse shell formers in the history. I just named two of them. But uh, the fact that this is a Grimlock that's not a shell former. He doesn't have a big piece of shell. No huge wing pack that doesn't fit his character. Like, the, he's a self-contained um, robot with without a whole bunch of kibble sticking off of him. And this one kind of does it better because like, uh, the head does a better job of tucking into his back so it's it doesn't leave a big old hoodie like, like the Fall of Cybertron dude does. So, you know, aside from the, if, if this was Voyager scaled, it would be perfect. In fact, I'm pretty sure like they made the anim the R.I.D. Grimlock out of Fall of Cybertron Grimlock, like with a repaint and a little bit of, of re-sculpting on his chest. So like this whole thing came full circle. Um, so yeah, like, like I said, uh, although he seems undersized when you put him next to a Voyager, like what most other Dinobots would be, he actually can look pretty good if you keep him in the right company. Because as we see, when you put him next to Slash, or his um, a proper Robots in Disguise figure that just happens to be one of the Scout size versions, then this works out. Yeah, like as long as you keep him like as uh, next to your Scout size Transformers, this is really good. He looks great. So yeah, a great looking figure, especially in this color scheme. And as long as you keep him in a display with your smaller figures, he look he still looks suitably imposing as a Grimlock. Um, plus, like, I'm um, again expressing my controversial opinions. I just think that this is a better way to make Grimlock, um, one that does not leave huge pieces of shell kibble. So. Yeah, that's what I have to say about that. So, um, yeah, like, if you're feeling nostalgic and uh, you missed out on this toy back in the day because, like me, you thought it might have been undersized, it's definitely worth a spot in your collection. This is Wake Angel 2001 signing off.